the breakthroughs that LEDs brought to the world start with Suji Nakamura's approval to start work on developing a blue LED light. Suji focused his efforts on the material gallium nitride, believing that it had the potential of unlocking a host of technical breakthroughs. However, the material proved to be very difficult to work with. First, he had to make gallium nitride, and then he had to make it into a P-type semiconductor, which would allow positively charged holes to move freely in the crystal to combine with negative electrons, the key to generating light. Suji concentrated all of his efforts for developing gallium nitride on using a metal organic chemical vapor deposition system, or MOCVD. While the idea to use an MOCVD was inspiration, as in any great discovery, actually making it work took years of perspiration. I started gross using MOCVD and, uh, and I tried to gross, but the results are terrible, you know. If the crystal quality is good, its uh, color should be transparent. But uh, sometimes gloss happened, but the color is, was black. Also, sometimes no gloss, so color was black. So basically, for first uh, four uh, fifth months, four months, basically, basically no crystal gloss and the color was black. So it was so bad. So that crystal gloss was the hardest one. And uh, so maybe six months later, after starting growth, I made the decision to modify the, this uh, commercial-based MOCVD. At that time, traditional MOCVDs would grow crystals by using a single gas flow, along with high temperatures and pressure. Crystal growth would occur. After poor results in growing the gallium nitride, Suji decided to modify the MOCVD to add an additional gas flow, creating a two-flow system. So almost 12 hours every day I, I worked at the company. And uh, next day, I modified the reactor, considering about uh, yesterday's result. And uh, I continued this pattern almost uh, one and a half years, oh, wow. every day. No holiday, no Sunday, no <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Only New Year's Day is a big day for Japan. So just uh, New Year's Day, I did just a couple of days. But basically, no Sunday. <laughs> I think uh, my family is mad at that time. I, but uh, so because I was considering of the, you know, just uh, crystal growth. Most of the scientific community believed that a two-flow system couldn't work because of turbulence created by the additional flow. So usually flow, you know, this is gas flow. We use gas flow. So gas flow should be laminar flow. So laminar flow means just one flow, beautiful flow. If you add another flow, it becomes turbulence flow because of two flow mixing, it, it, this region becomes turbulence. Usually, turbulence causes bad things for the crystal growth. Yeah, but uh, I use a special, uh, you know, gas flow nozzle, using gas special gas flow. Even if you added another flow, and uh, it became beautiful, uh, it, laminar flow, it became beautiful. So, uh, that was my trick. So, you know, this crystal growth, uh, two flow is the uh, key, most important breakthrough. The years of hard work and dedication proved fruitful with the developments that would revolutionize lighting. In, in my viewpoint, it wasn't just the one thing that he, he did. Uh, he had a series of breakthroughs. He, even before the P-type, he got a really what's called high crystal quality through this um, MOCVD method, which is just a very sophisticated oven used to bake the crystals. He had the highest crystal quality in the world. And this is, by crystal quality, I mean how clear it looks and how you know pure it looks and how many defects. Very similar to picking out a diamond ring. Cheap diamond rings are, look yellow and they aren't very brilliant. Pure gallium nitride looks just like a diamond when it's grown right. It looks clear and transparent. And so he got very high quality in terms of uh, the clarity. Um, then the next big breakthrough was uh, getting the, finding the right materials to put in it to make it P-type. So that's magnesium that you add that to the uh, gallium nitride, um, but after even getting the bright blue LED, he, he took it even a couple steps further by finding out that um, by adding indium, uh, an additional element, you can make these very bright active layers and you can make them what we call the nanostructure active layers. They're, they're very thin, um, also known as quantum structures, and that gives you the additional ability to make them very efficient. So um, it's really those three pieces of the puzzle uh, this materials puzzle that he put together that then, you know, gave rise to this um, industry of solid state lighting. 
But Suji and his team went a step further. Not only do they have a source for a bright white LED, they also developed an economical method to make the semiconductor. By creating a new method for depositing indium into the gallium nitride, Suji had before him the first high-brightness blue LED. This was also the key to making a white LED. The blue LED is the engine for the white LED. The white LED is a mix of the blue LED that Shuji Nakamura developed, covered with a phosphor that puts out yellow. By using his knowledge of phosphors, Suji developed a coating that shifted the bright blue light emitted by his new diode to white, creating the first high brightness white LED. Besides revolutionizing light sources, this pioneering development brought him the 2006 Millennium Technology Prize. The blue and white LED has since become ubiquitous, enabling the creation of a profusion of different devices and uses in places we can see, and in those we can't, in communications and medical devices, and every other place a light source can be employed. Its efficiency and adaptability continue to have the potential to revolutionize lighting and its impacts in ways and uses we have yet to imagine. For the past 30 years, scientists have been working on better ways of getting efficient lighting. People didn't use gallium nitride because there wasn't a good p-type material. In fact, many people said you can't make a highly doped p-type material. And it wasn't pursued to any significant extent. But Suji Nakamura focused on that as the problem and found a solution to make very good doping, very high doping in p-type material, and consequently then very efficient LEDs. And they work substantially better than all the other alternatives that other people were working on, zinc selenide and organic LEDs and things like this. And, and uh, it has truly changed the world. I saw Shuji for the first time in person at a meeting a few years later in Berlin, where he gave an invi invited talk. And uh, he showed a comp small computer-driven display panel. And I simply said to the guy who was sitting next to me, you know, this is the beginning of the end of the light bulb. From an energy conservation point of view, the, uh, the white LED is the most efficient light source we have today uh, on the planet. And the reason is, is because we can get nearly 90% uh, energy efficiency of, uh, that is, we can convert 90% of the electricity we put into it into uh, visible light. Uh, most light sources, like um, let's say the tungsten light bulb, uh, you put, let's say, 100% energy into it, only 5% comes out as visible light. The energy savings in the U.S. Uh, would be about $40 billion a year if everybody adopted LED lighting. And the Department of Energy has estimated that in about 10 years, uh, we could probably take about 50 uh, power plants offline due to the energy savings uh, from LEDs just in the U.S. alone. Now, if you consider that the U.S. consumes only about 20% of the world's electricity, you can multiply that number by five. So that means maybe about 250 power plants could be uh, taken offline or replaced worldwide if we switched to LED lighting. So the energy savings is several hundred billion dollars a year uh, in, in better use of electricity. The high brightness LED that Suji pioneered is thoroughly integrated into our daily lives and continues to find more uses and become more refined. Like any scientist, Suji didn't dream of changing the world. He just wanted to understand problems in physics and technology. But he has developed something that has already changed our world in many ways. Though he never dreamed it, Perhaps the greatest revolution he has brought to the world is the chance to bring light to where it has never been, allowing people to do what they never could before. The story doesn't end here. What does the future hold? What is he and his group working on now? Next time on Lighting the World, the future of solid state lighting and display.